Hey, thanks for watching Weekly Word. We appreciate you being with us and uh, hope that uh, this is benefiting your life spiritually and maybe that you wanna share it with somebody else. It might strengthen them as well in their journey with Christ. Uh, in Acts chapter 12, there's a, a tremendous story about the Apostle Peter. The church is just getting started and there is a king that we're familiar with in the scripture named King Herod. And King Herod has put James, the brother of John, one of the disciples, to death. And he finds out uh, that when he does that, it is politically um, a positive thing for him uh, to really persecute and to mistreat these people that are following the ways of Christ. The Jews loved that and Herod wanted their approval. And so he takes Peter, one of the other disciples, and he throws him in prison. And the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 12 that Peter is there in prison between two guards. And all of a sudden in the middle of the night, uh, he is nudged and an angel of God has been dispatched so, to set him free. All of a sudden his chains are down and the angel tells him to put his clothes on, get his stuff, and we're getting out of this place. And they begin to walk out of the jail. Now what's happening in another location, in the house of a man by the name of, whose mother owned a home by the name of John Mark, is that there are people in the church that are not in prison, they are praying. They are praying, and the Bible uses this word, they are earnestly praying. In other words, this is not just a quick prayer. Hey, Lord, if you could just take care of Peter and get him out of prison, we'd appreciate that a lot. No, this is earnest prayer fervent prayer. This is prayer that is intense, calling out to God. Not one person, but a group of people in a house calling out to God to set Peter free from prison. The Bible story goes on to say in, Luke, in Acts chapter 12, it says that as, as they're walking in, the angel is leading them out through the city, that they come, it says in verse 10, verse 11, that they come to an iron gate and the gate suddenly opens. They just walk up to this iron gate that is shut, locked, closed, but all of a sudden it opens. It opens the same way the shackles on his arms opened. I was reading that the other day, other day and thinking to myself, you know, we often in our lives uh, come to obstacles, uh, iron gates, if you will, that we need to have opened in our lives, that we need to see a, a, a guidance through, to be able to walk through whatever that difficulty in our lives, whatever that challenge is. How do those iron gates open? The iron gates open to the result of fervent and earnest prayer before God, seeking Him and calling out to Him the same way they did in the early church. Maybe one of the reasons why we don't experience a lot of strength and power in our life spiritually is because we don't spend enough time calling out to God, seeking Him, asking Him. Maybe we spend a lot of time calling and asking Him because we've not listened to what He's said in response to us, how He's communicated with us in what we need to do and how we need to walk. As you go into 2022, have you got an iron gate in front of you, an iron gate that needs to open? Maybe you begin on your knees. Maybe you begin in prayer, calling out to God and asking Him to open things up, to move you forward, to keep you walking in the right direction and in the ways of God. You never waste time when you're calling out to God. You never waste time when you're praying to Him and telling Him the needs, the desires, the longings, the challenges of your life. May God bless you. We'll see you next week.